Welcome to Smack Talk. I almost said Raw Talk. We're not there yet. And I really, really enjoyed this show overall. There's going to be a link down below, as always, in the description box to credit WWE for piecing this together. And again, I always have some cheat cheat, cheat notes, whatever to write down so I can remember little details and whatnot. So Roman Reigns and the rest of the bloodline, which is pretty small now compared to how it was before, anointed Solo Sokoa as basically the tribal prince. He is going to succeed Roman Reigns in the future. It's not going to be Jimmy. Jimmy, you could tell by his body language, he thought it was going to be him, and it was not him. Roman's now been champion for 1,202 days. Last time we saw him was the first week of November at Crown Jewel. And uh, Roman says that Solo stepped up, and then Randy Orton came out, challenged him basically to the title, right? Really quick, and that was really nice to see. We could see that right here. Again, in the link, you can always uh, click on these as it'll show you highlights. So if you don't have cable or whatever, you could still check it out. Then we've got the tournament US title match between Grayson Waller and Carmelo Hayes, which I really, really like. He's from NXT. I don't think he's been called up to the main roster yet. I have a feeling he's going to. And that is actually pretty crazy. There was some wild moves from both Waller and Hayes. Very, very impressed. That had This had, it helps if I could speak, had the E in WWE. Very impressed. There's no way this guy's not getting called up. Great, great, great quality match. And uh, yeah, by the way, Carmelo uh, did win the match. And then from there, we had backstage Randy Orton and LA Knight chat chatted a little bit. And essentially, LA Knight was like, look, I know you didn't need my help. And Randy's like, that's right. I don't need your help. I just want you to stay clear out of my way. He doesn't hate him. He goes, I think we're good, right? We got our match last week and we won. I want to keep it that way. And basically, LA Knight seems adamant that he wants to stick around with LA or uh, with Randy. Rather, I pulled a Michael Cole there. I almost said Michael Hayes because of Carmelo Hayes, Michael Hayes. Anyways. So that's that. Nothing wrong with that. And then we had the tournament U.S. title match between KO and Austin Theory. <laughs> Again, this was just a wonderful match. Great moves, great back and forth. Just all the things that you would want to see in a match. It was just fun to watch. And that's, uh, for the most part, usually the impression that I get from a lot of these matches. Regardless of the promotion that I watch, I just enjoy what I'm seeing and hearing on television. So I'm very grateful for that. And KO did win the match, and he's going to move on. I don't know who I want uh, to win the U.S. title. I'll talk about that a little bit more maybe next week or something once we start weeding out some more of the people. Backstage, backstage, uh, Roman Reigns talks with the bloodline about Randy Orton, and Jimmy said, yeet. And I'm not going to lie, not really into the yeet. I love Jimmy Uso to death, not into the yeet. Okay, makes me want to give him the beat. And uh, when Jimmy did the yeet, Roman was like, well, no, that's The Rock. Uh, he basically was like, and Jimmy's like, yeah, no yeet, eh? He's like, that's right, no yeet. Vignette promo with Karrion Cross. I could totally see this guy in a movie. Like, a lot of times it's easy to be like, what I'm going to do to you next time I see you in the middle of that ring. It's not going to be pretty. Like, it could come across as like, yeah, okay there. Uh, very cringy and corny, kind of like what I just did. It's not it's not believable. And Karrion Cross to me, is incredibly believable. I buy his story, and I've always been a fan of his, and I'm glad to see that he's kind of like more in the picture now. Backstage, Cameron Grimes, which he wasn't scheduled to like re wrestle or anything, but he congratulated KO, you know, on his victory match because, you know, KO hurt his hand really bad. And uh, then Carmelo, Carmelo, yes, Carmelo Hayes showed up and said, look, man, I respect you, but no offense, you ain't going to be punching me kind of thing. Like, uh, I'm not Waller, I'm not Theory. And KO was just standing there like, what? Like, okay, whatever sort of thing. Unfortunately, Charlotte Flair in her match with Asuka last week when she got suplexed over the top row back into the ring. Okay. 
she landed awkwardly on her knee, tore her ACL. She's going to be out for nine months. That is absolutely huge. And the fact that Charlotte Flair even finished a match is testament to her resiliency. Like, that's just insane. So I wanted to talk about that really quick. We had a vignette promo with Bailey, which was really cringy. Didn't like it. Talking about the history of damage control and how her baby is finally going to come. She wants, uh, you know, the tag team there. I forget their name with Asuka and, and the other one. I'm, I'm just being real. I forget. How recruit no, I don't remember the name. But anyways, she wants them to be tag champion. Bailey wants to dethrone Rhea. And then you got Io Sky as champ. And then they'd all have the gold and all that. Uh, it's not going to happen. Oh, there you go. The Kabuki Warriors. And they defeated Zelina Vega and Mishin. Which I really like uh, Mishin. I did not like how they won the whole distraction with Bailey and Dakota Kai. Uh, it sounds rude. And there's nothing wrong with not having to like it. But, uh, like, it was a good match. I just, I, don't, I just don't care for damage control. It's fine. But the match was good. I just didn't like how they won. And obviously, it's a heel thing. The distractions and all that. Great. I really wanted Mishin to win, but let's be real. We, we're not going to have Mishin and Zelina winning the tag titles. They're, they're, like, new together. Do they even know each other? Like, there's no, like, real story behind them. They just started kind of hanging out uh, as of late. So, yeah. All right. Randy Orton defeats Jimmy Uso. We're not there yet. Backstage, Paul and Roman were chatting, but you don't see that. And basically, Jimmy and Solo Sokoa were chatting. We're actually Jimmy was doing all the talk and, you know, being paranoid, wondering what they're what they're doing, like, why is it taking so long? And then asking Solo, you know what, would you back me up or, and tell me what's going on if something was going to happen to me? And Solo's just like, I'm your brother. That's not quite how he said it, but we can, we can, uh, we can pretend. And we had the vignette promo with Santos Escobar. And I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on, but I'm really, really liking Santos. And now he's dressing up and and all that. The whole, you know, just the vibe. I'm just, I'm really, really liking it. And uh, he's going to be going after Bobby. And then backstage, we had Bobby and the Street Profits. And they were chatting about the U.S. title tournament. And how basically Santos Escobar is in his way. And again, it goes back to that other thing that I said that I really, really adore when you have two heels or two face, whatever, and, and they're just like, they don't like each other. Again, just because you're on the same side of the fence doesn't mean you're going to like each other, okay? And then Randy versus Jimmy. It was a, it was a good match. Kind of one-sided, but you expect that from the Apex Predator. And then Solo came out once Jimmy was in trouble. Then LA Knight came out. And then Roman came out. You know, like the whole thing was just a clusterfuck. I can drop an F-bomb now. That's essentially what happened, so... Uh, sorry, LA Knight took out Solo from behind. But then after, Roman takes out Solo from behind. But that's not even the treat of the night. It was like, what the hell is that? And then we had, of course, AJ Styles' music that hit. And this was really, really, really cool. He came out from behind, bopped Roman Reigns with the phenomenal forearm... Got rid of all the bloodline, but then out of nowhere turned around to LA Knight and clotheslined him. And then just walked away awkwardly past the bloodline. So that's the biggest thing with that story. Again, just because you're like face or whatever. Uh, like, it doesn't mean that you can't have dissension with people. And I find that's been happening a lot more lately in recent times in wrestling, which is why I keep going on about it. To me, it's like a big deal. Uh, I'm really, really curious to know, like... Where did that come from? I don't remember L.A. Knight doing anything bad to A.J. Styles. Okay. It was Solo that put A.J. on the shelf. And then there was the whole thing with, I almost said Arn Anderson. Carl Anderson. The, uh, I feel really bad. And then the dude that used to be Festus. Oh my God. Carl Anderson and, you know, the, uh, the, the O.C. My goodness. They haven't been around in a while, and they absolutely freaking should be. And But Mishin's around, and, you know, they're supposed to be like the whole OC together, right? And I'm kind of hoping that that comes back and that AJ Styles is still face, but he just has a problem with LA Knight. I don't know. 
I don't know what's going to go on. But supposedly there was a rumor that I read, so if you don't want spoilers, because I don't know how factual this is. Spoiler coming in three, two, one. Supposedly after the show, Nick Aldis said that Randy Orton's going to go up against AJ Styles and LA Knight to, for some tournament for the U.S. title who's going to be able to compete for it or something like that. And that's it. That's pretty much it. Just a short, sweet video. Was it? Yeah, about 10 minutes. That's good. 10 minutes, and it should only about take about 10 or 15-ish. Uh, Let's close that. Uh, for Raw. Actually, hold on. I want to see something. Yes, it was capturing my screen. That's always good. Yeah, so just overall, I just, again, had a great time with the show. It was fun. It was entertaining. And like I said, I look or try to look for the good in all the different shows. doesn't matter the, the promotion. I don't care about the three-letter acronym. I take what I can from each show, and I move on. If I didn't like a certain segment, whatever. I like more of the show than I do dislike the show. And I know not everybody feels the same way about that. That's are you wouldn't be watching this video anyways if you just don't care at all for WWE or any wrestling in general. But that's just how I feel about it. Is it is it like the 80s? No, it's a completely different time. It's not even like the Attitude Era or the Ruthless Aggression Era. All those eras are different. There was some cringe. There was some stuff from back then I didn't like. Now it... it definitely feels a lot different i feel like in the early 2000s when the ruthless aggression era kind of died off um i started liking it a lot less because it was a lot more politically correct and all that sort of stuff and i and i just didn't i didn't like it so basically ever since they've gone like pg or whatever is that the whole thing yeah like i, I think wrestling back in the day used to be like pg-13 and I have to admit, it was uh, more enjoyable. But still, there's a lot of things going on over the last few years. A lot of great moments that I've been able to enjoy. And uh, that's the end of that. So, thumbs up if you liked the video. It does greatly help support the channel with the algorithm and making me a little bit more relevant. Just that much more in the search results when people are looking shit up, so they say. And if you didn't like the video... Thumbs down, we'll bend it in half, we'll twist it. Samoan spike, solo Sokoa thumb broken off in your ass. And uh, if you want to subscribe to the channel. Exactly, I don't even need to finish that sentence. Naturally, that would be great now, wouldn't it? But if not, thanks for stopping by anyways. Take care and maybe I'll see some of you in the next one. Bye for now.